Bangalore Open Air 2023 not only marked the 10-year anniversary of the event, but it was also an event which was three years in the waiting for all of its fans. How exactly did it fare? Let's have a look. What's up everyone and welcome to Tuck TV. If this is the first time you guys are stopping by, we are a channel which mainly focuses on metal in all of its forms original compositions, funny stuff, and a lot of experiments as well. Now, do excuse my voice because it sounds a bit too husky and worn out because, well, I was screaming my lungs out in Bangalore open air. And let's face it, if you guys haven't actually lost your voice by the end of an event, did you actually enjoy the event? Now, this edition of Bangalore open air was something which was supposed to happen way back in 2020, but then the pandemic hit, a lot of things happened, live shows weren't allowed, and well, we had to wait till 2023 to actually get this edition. And with all of this, Bangalore open air was also celebrating 10 years of its existence. And this was something which was huge, not only for the organizers, but for the metalheads ourselves, because well, this was a platform when all of us would get together and kind of enjoy the whole day. Now, before going into the actual gig itself, one of the major things what I wanted to talk about was something which happens every year in Bangalore Open Air. And this is essentially a platform wherein we get to meet our friends, both old and new, and kind of have that sense of a community. Especially after events like the pandemic, this kind of a platform was essential for all of us to get together and, well, have a good time at it. I honestly met Quite a lot of people whom I haven't talked to or even seen in the past half a decade or so and it's wonderful to kind of continue the same relationship what we have without even you know missing a beat. Another aspect which is honestly heartwarming was to meet a few of the followers out there and well this kind of made my day because we don't essentially get a lot of chances to kind of interact with you guys a lot and these kind of platforms do provide us with possibilities to meet you guys and have a conversation as well. So with all of these things said, on the morning of the gig, we were all pretty excited to actually kind of go and attend the gig. We were like small school children who were actually kind of excited for like a school trip or a picnic of sorts. We kind of had everything ready, got along with a few of our friends and started driving to the event. Now essentially, we did have the whole thing planned in such a way that we wouldn't miss a single musical note of the event. But Bangalore traffic had, well, let's just say different plans for us. We did end up getting delayed to go to the venue itself and, well, we missed the complete set of Amorphia. But, well, knowing the band and kind of hearing them multiple times as well, I'm pretty sure they kicked ass on stage, thrashed the entire thing and, well, had one hell of a show. Sorry we missed you out there, so... Here's looking forward to the next time that I see you live. But with that said, we were able to make our way exactly before Godless took the stage. And well, this is something which I was looking forward to because I haven't seen Godless live in say a really long time. And yeah, it was honestly worth the whole way. Now from their first note itself, they were able to hook in the complete audience, play one hell of a tight gig. And well, they kind of laid the seeds for all the mosh pits which were going to come up eventually. One more aspect about the band which I totally loved was the fact that they had a dedicated merch stall as well. I was waiting to pick up their discs from quite a long time and finally got the opportunity to. Now after this, it was time for the metal veterans dying embrace to go on stage and kind of be like this time traveling machine of sort to kind of take us back to the roots of what metal was. Now this essentially was a farewell show for Dying Embrace and all the metalheads out there were there to make sure they gave their metal salutes for one of the grand masters of what metal is in India. Now being somebody who's actually seen them perform multiple times on stage, I'm pretty sure their presence is going to be missed and yeah, I do hope I see these guys somewhere here and there so at least we can strike up a conversation. Now following them was Cryptos, another veteran to the Indian metal scene and well these guys had the complete crowd moving with their setlist. The songs majorly consisted of a lot of the newer stuff which is from Force of Danger which is the newest album. Me personally I would have loved to see a lot of their older stuff you know kind of say Calls of Apollyon which is my favourite album. But yeah, I mean, beggars can't be choosers, we got to see these guys live on stage and it was an absolute treat. And hey, at the end of the day, a killer gig is all that matters, right? Now coming to my favourite part of the evening, Pestilence took the stage. These guys were an absolute sledgehammer which bludgeoned the complete crowd and left all of us wanting more. Now these guys are absolute legends in the death metal industry and a band which I personally wanted to see live from a really long time. Seeing these guys perform their absolutely tight set on stage and having one of the best sounding live snares that I've actually seen till date, it kind of blew the whole audience away. 
द मॉश पेट्स एसेंशली वर लेजेंडरी आई एब्सोल्युटली हैव नो वर्ड्स टू डिस्क्राइब इट यू जस्ट हैव टू बी देयर टू एक्सपीरियंस इट especially with these guys getting time for sneaking in one last track into the set list everybody went nuts that's the only way that i can describe the whole thing oh and to make things better these guys were playing the set during the whole twilight hours and essentially midway during the set is where all the light works started coming on and well this kind of added to the whole experience of seeing these guys live now after everybody got a bit of time to catch their breath bone of osiris finally took the stage and trust me this is a band that you guys have to absolutely experience live now they own the complete stage playing tracks which were both old and new and well they had one of the most bounciest mosh pits which i've ever seen and yeah i mean if you guys were there you would understand when i call it a bouncy mosh pit now these guys essentially ended their list with machine which was the album which me and everybody else was eagerly waiting to experience and Yeah, it drew us all bonkers. Now a little bit of shameless self promotion here. Watch out for a lot of the shots which we're going to be posting on Instagram and YouTube shots. A couple of videos were the things which I took during the set of Born of Osiris and trust me these are things that you would want to see. And finally, it was time for the freezing winds from the moon to take over and mayhem hit the stage. Now to be very honest here the complete set list of mayhem was incredibly well orchestrated a performance which was both visually and audibly stunning I have no other words other than calling their whole performance a piece of art because well all the way from their sounds to the imagery to the way that they carried themselves on stage even the costumes themselves it kind of painted a whole picture there you know like seeing the whole backdrop of these columns ancient columns and yeah even artwork of their latest album being put up as well it kind of brought about the feeling of us being in a very dark and desolated place and well if black metal isn't the genre which can actually do this what else can oh and before you guys go ha 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 he doesn't know how to pronounce genre there yeah i did but the throat screwed so can't help it Now with mayhem drawing a close to the evening I'm pretty sure all of us were left with smiles on our faces and eargasms and this was a gig that we were waiting forward to as I said this was 3 years in the waiting for each of us and it definitely delivered at the end but with that said there was one small hiccup for the gig in my opinion and this was essentially about the food in the event I'm not telling that the food was bad that food was actually really good but then essentially the quantity of food started reducing on the second half of the day and it kind of led to a situation wherein a lot of us had to either decide whether to catch our favorite bands on stage or wait in a huge queue for the food to actually come in I'm not sure who messed it up here but then essentially with a crowd of say expected number of people coming in there should have been a better like you know supply chain for all the food which is there and yeah it wouldn't have left a lot of people starving for more but hey these are smaller things which can be overlooked considering the fact that the gig was absolutely amazing we got to meet a lot of our friends and well the community itself was there to support each other and kind of show what we are now before we end the show we wanted to know from you guys about how your experience went Let us know down in the comments below about all the different things which you guys enjoyed, the moments which stood out for you guys, the ones which had you screaming for more. We'd love to hear it from you guys. With that, this is Duck TV signing off, and as always, stay safe and stay metal.